Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We pray that you be with us, help us to understand your word. Be with us throughout our discussions. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to School of Marriage. Um, this is the third, the third session we are having. And um, I believe that it's very important, the things that we are been uh, studying is important that we give them attention. It is a knowledge acquisition, you know, knowledge acquiring encounter. And uh, we have to prepare ourselves for anything that is uh, worth doing. Even when you want to drive, you go to driving school to prepare yourself. And uh, we, uh, so when you want to marry, to, you must attend marriage school. So that last week we talked about compatibility, the concept of compatibility. And um, I want volunteers, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do something. I, can I have the microphone? Today I'm talking about the differences between the sexes. So, can I have the the microphone? Can you can we get a microphone? Okay. How how many of us know that uh, men and women are different? Okay. First of all, do you believe that there are only two sexes, two genders? Yeah. We, I think we need to establish that one first. <laughs> Because now it's becoming crazy, you know. They've come up with hundred different genders. Bible says in the beginning he made them male and female, created he them. Male and female. Okay, so um uh, no come I, okay, come. I want you to tell me. One thing you dislike about men, about guys. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and I, I, I would like a guy to, to volunteer and to tell us one thing that you dislike. Oh, well, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay, okay. So the mic will get there. Yeah, Belinda, let's, uh, let's hear you. What I, I dislike is um, when um, you, you <laughs> when maybe as a lady or a lady friend, maybe, I don't want to use like, but maybe when you pay attention to and then they don't, yeah, they don't, yeah, they don't mind you. Yeah, so they don't, they don't. Yes, you, know, you pay attention, but they don't they don't mind you. Okay. All right. Yes, Esther. Um, Daddy, Daddy, please, you see some guys are nice, as in they are handsome. Okay. And I dislike it when they are conscious of their beauty. You see, when a, guy's, when a guy knows he's nice, he tends to rush, like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm now is a perfect example. <laughs> Uh, what, what, what is it great? So, you see that they, they tend to be what? I didn't get the last part. They tend to be like proud. They rush like the churches. Daddy, please, it's not true. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's getting personal. The names that are being mentioned. Yes. Okay, Daddy. Um, you see, most of the time, it's like <laughs> you see, most of the time, like you try to be nice to a brother, like you are not having like any motive, as in like 
maybe you want to show the person that you are interested by. It's like the person tends to start acting weird towards you. It's like the person doesn't know your motive or something. Like, and the person starts, mm, then I saw Baker, then they won't share some But maybe in your mind, that's not the. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's one. And then secondly, like, like mostly like the most of them are bosses, especially those who are you know good intellectually and other things they tend to be bosses like do they this do this do boss, this boss. yeah like they have that bossy nature it's like always do this like it's one thing that like, i really hate like, you hate or it is like you hate that okay okay so um um okay so far the guys are not talking so i don't know i also <laughs> <laughs> i also don't like um, guys who don't like to pamper ladies who don't like to pamper ladies and what are some of the examples of the pampering um yeah in tree like uh, about Mark, where are you going? <laughs> In the morning, you were sitting here, so <laughs> okay, yeah. So, what do, you, what do you mean by pampering? Okay, let me say pampering in many sense, like maybe when he knows that you are hungry and you want to eat, yeah, and then like. He, he he cares, so he would like that you take care of yourself. Like some, even just some uh, things that he will tell you, not in the wrong sense, but if if a guy tells you to take care of yourself, it's it sounds good. Like you you realize that the person cares, so he cares if he's he likes when you take care of likes when you take care of yourself, and then <laughs> yeah, and then. Okay. Okay. Um. What What I don't like about ladies uh, growing up, like one time, I never liked this ladies who insult. Like I realized that when it comes to that aspect, they have a dictionary for that. The words that will come out of their mouth, like you can see it. And after that, when they are done, they are like, "Look, I'm sorry." But no, I cause it imaginary, and the way they can describe you so a dress for you. I never knew some of them are head tailors and <laughs> seamstress in terms of insults. Like it's it's too that's one thing I don't like about them here. Yeah. Uh okay. <coughs> well okay. So Derek, maybe that will be the final one. Okay, so uh I think I think yeah, they but they are not the the, 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 the guys they're, are not talking so okay. I think the same can be said for the the ladies. I don't know the the one who said uh, when uh, Ella Ella, no, I think it was Ella. I think for the ladies to sometimes when you just try to be a friend to them, they misinterpret your actions. Huh? Yeah, so it's the same on both sides. Like you are just trying to be a friend, and they, they, they misunderstand. Okay. 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 Um. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't like about girls is um the ladies who like teasing guys. <laughs> you know. Growing up, growing up, oh, relax, relax. Growing up, one challenge I faced was ladies who teased me with my head. <laughs> it was it was so annoying. There, there was there was this particular girl in my class. Even if any anybody at all teased me. I'll be okay, but that's particular. 
<laughs> was it was the teasing always uh like uh, uh was it always heard or like seen or public or sometimes they, they used gestures and sometimes they used other ways to tease you daddy in all forms <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. The the reason why, uh, ah. <laughs> okay, okay. Let 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 Mark also speak. Uh, yes. Okay. Um. I am. I I like everything about ladies. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Okay. See, um, the the reason why I asked that was this. Um, we we have to understand the basic differences between males and females. We are different, even though we are very similar. You know, we are. Very, very different. Very different. And like I always say, it's as if we came from two different um, uh, cities, you know. And not until we understand and accept that we are different and then relate to each other based on that understanding, we are always going to have conflict. I mean, come to think of it, there are only two, two types of people in the world. Male, female. But the world cannot contain us. Only two types. God created only two types. What about if God had created a thousand types of people? But only two, male, female, so that the world cannot even contain us. You know. So we have to understand the differences. Now the differences, they they are there are two two ways to look at the differences. Nature and then nature. So nature is what God or how God made um, men, how God made women. God made us different, different. Nature is the effect of our environment, the effect of our socialization, the effect of, let me say, brainwashing, orientation. All those things are nature, nature. So we have nature. And then we have nature. Okay. Now, you can write this down. Purpose gives birth to design. And design gives birth to need. So, purpose is equal to design. Is equal to, or purpose, arrow, design, then arrow, need. If you take a car, for instance, you have the purpose of the car. So the purpose of the car dictated the design of the car. What is the purpose for a car? Who can who can help? What is why do you think a car was transportation? So everything about a car can be reduced to just one thing transportation. To solve the problem of transportation. You so that you, you wouldn't have to work. So uh, transportation is faster to transport people and things from one location to the other. That is the purpose of a car. And because of the purpose, the way a car has been designed is because of the purpose of the car. So one, there must be something that will make the movement faster. In fact, the first thing is that there must be a compartment to carry people and goods. That's why every car is able to carry people. Some cars can carry uh, more people, depending on the purpose. If the car has been designed to carry sand, the back, the bucket, the bucket is bigger than the head because it's designed to carry more sand, not human beings. But if a car is designed to carry human beings, see that the compartment is, is designed differently. Apart from that, 
the car was designed to run on engine. If if not if not for the purpose, there'll be no because a bicycle too can can transport people. But we are talking about efficiency and speed. So the car the car uh, is better than a bicycle in terms of efficiency and speed. So it runs it 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 is it, is propelled by an engine so that it can move faster. Because of that, so the engine uh, is the design. The compartment is the design, everything. Now, that design will also create a need. So there's something the car needs to be able to fulfill its purpose and then run according to design. It needs fuel. It needs oil. It needs water. So without fuel, without oil, without water, a car is nothing. The purpose for which the car, unless you want to push it, now that one, you you yourself, you know that, I mean, you can't push a car from here to a car. <laughs> you can't. So even though the car has a purpose, the need, the need of the car is the fuel, the oil, the water, these things are not things that um, you can say are optional. If you want the car to move, you must supply those needs. So when you see needs, anytime you see needs, 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 your mind must go to purpose. Your mind must go to design. Now, the man and the woman, there is a purpose. The reason why God created them, the two are different. And their purpose reflects in their design. I get it. And their design also detects their needs. So if you want them to function according to purpose, you must supply the need before they function according to purpose and in line with their design. Let me give you just one example. If you look at even physiology, physiological uh, outlook of the male and the female. Now, the reason that the, the female uh, is the one who is supposed to carry and nurture and release generations. Release generations. That is a purpose. I get you. That's the purpose. The purpose, if you took you take the physiology between man and woman, the woman is the one who is supposed to carry, supposed to grow on nature and release people into the world. No human being apart from uh no, every human being came out of a woman, you know, apart from Adam. Every human being, every human being, whether male or female, came out of a woman. And so, one of the major purposes of a woman is to make sure that the generations are uh, sustained, like, as in, to be able to bring, the, the, I mean, that, the, the, that human living will not be extinct. Human, human living will not come to an end. Okay. Because of that purpose, look at the way the woman has been designed. Has been designed with the womb. See, the womb is the compartment that will house the cell, that will house the baby. Designed with a breast, with breast milk, that will sustain the life when it comes out for some time. So the purpose dictates or dictated the design. That's why if you are a man and then you go and do surgery and turn into a woman, uh, I mean, your design, your design is not natural, and it defeats your purpose. I get you. So then, because of the design that the woman has, it creates some need also, some need. Now look at the man. The man has been designed to carry the generations, the seed. So the man is the one who has the seed. That's why the, the, 
The man is the one who carries the sperm, the seed, not a woman. The woman only incubates the seed, grows the seed, releases the seed, nurses the seed. Are you getting it? Now, so, so you see that even physiologically, men and women, we are different. That difference is not only physical, emotionally, psychologically, even spiritually. In fact, when you, when you talk about spiritually, the difference of our spirituality, you actually, is not the spirit, it's the, the soul and the body that has affected the spirit, how the spirit is expressed. But spiritually speaking, the spirit has no gender. So the spirit in the man and the spirit in the woman, they are both mankind. They are both mankind. Man, you know, mankind. God said, let us make man. It was referring to human beings, mankind. Now, look at the even the sex organs of the two. One is designed to give, one is designed to receive. Now, that is not only physiological, that is also psychological. Men have been designed to give. Women have been designed to receive, designed to keep, designed to multiply, you know, grow, designed to release. Men have been designed to give, give. Okay. <clears throat> so, if you take a woman and a man, Adults, man, adults, woman. You will see that the, these differences cannot be overlooked. And the most amazing thing is that um, God made these differences. And these differences, it, these, these are the things that make us attracted to each other. So, if you're Design and your need, your your purpose, your purpose, your design, your function dictates your need. Then it means that you have different needs, and he or she has different needs. That's why in the Bible, God will always say that men should love their their wives, so women should submit to their husbands. What the Bible was trying to say was that give each other what he or she needs. You cannot say you love apple juice. So you are going to give your car apple juice. Your car will more function because apple juice cannot, car cannot run on apple juice because of its purpose and desire. How you get me? Okay. So I'm going to take it the f- uh, physical uh, differences. Now, I've already talked about the structure or the appearance or the, f- the physiological outlook of the male and the female and the, even the excess organs, how they have been designed and how they have been positioned. You know, one is designed to give, one is designed to or you don't, you don't understand that one. You, you understand that one. One is designed to give, one is designed to receive. Okay. Then, look at the physical appearance. Because one of the functions of the male was to be a protector. To protect. Every man has that instinct of a protector in him. Every man. He can, he can, he can abuse it, but it is still there. That instinct to protect is still there. If you, if you have sisters, if you are a man, you have sisters. When, whenever somebody is trying to bully them, you see how your 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 manness comes, and how you, even you may not even be the older one, you may even be the younger one, but the way you rally, I mean, you run to your sister's rescue. It's natural. It's natural. You know, if you are a lady and you have brothers, even when you are the older one. You always, if you're, let's say you are two years older, let's say you are the firstborn, then your next, the one after you is a brother. You are a sister, and he is a brother. You will see that in, on, on many occasions, you, you will even be running to him for protection. 
when we hear things like men mamro, where are the men? So in the house, where are the men? Sometimes the men that are small, small boys, but they are the men of the house. <laughs> because the man was designed to be a protector. In the ancient times, you will see these drawings, you know, about people who live in caves. The women and the children were in the caves. The man was standing at the mouth of the cave. And the reason was that he was protecting his territory, protecting the wife and the children from harm. That's the reason why God built the male body differently from the female body. The male body is different. It's, it's more robust. It's, it's stronger. Stronger from the head to the waist level. The woman is stronger from the waist to the feet level. The, the man is stronger from the upper parts of the body. The man is stronger. That's why men can lift heavy things. They can, men can lift heavy things. Women don't lift heavy things. They can't. But men, when, you, when, when we are pushing a car, we call for the men. The men. Even after service, when we want people to carry the speakers and the order, have you ever seen a lady carrying the speakers? No. I mean, that's not, that's not their job. They have not been designed to do that. So when you see a man, that the man is built, it means that he, he was meant to be a protector. Um, that's how God made us like that. Okay, so the man is naturally stronger than the woman. Okay. So then, but the woman too has strength in her body from the waist to the feet. How, you know, they carry babies and the strength they need to push during childbirth. The man will not have that strength. And it's almost supernatural. You know, the woman has and the, the pain threshold, the ability to endure pain physically in the body. Women have that more than men. Even though men have it in their mind more than women. So a man can endure pain because of because he has made up his mind to endure. Okay? But a woman can and your physical pain in the body. That's why sometimes, despite all the pain in childbirth, right after some years, they will go and get pregnant again and they will give birth again. They, they've forgotten about the pain that they, they went through the last two years. Yes. Okay, so our makeup determines our needs. Okay. And because the man is a protector, there's a, a kind of attitude that will put a man off. And there's a kind of attitude that will also put a woman off. Number one, on the part of the woman. If you don't show yourself strong enough to protect, the woman becomes confused and unstable because she wants to find a protector in the man. So she wants you to protect her interests she was, that's why sometimes even they want you to fight their fights. You know, when, when you have sisters and somebody threatens them, they'll come and call you. They'll, 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 they'll come and call you. If, if somebody does something against you, you know, you tell your fiancé, somebody is threatening you. You know, you, you, you go and call the person because he's supposed to be the one who protects you. When, when there's an issue, you will call a man to go with you. Can you accompany me to this place? Because of that instinct to protect. And so if you're a woman and you have a very strong exterior, most men don't want to come close to you. Hi, Gatibi. If you're a woman and you have a very strong exterior, but actually you may have a strong exterior, but internally you are not that strong. But if you put up a strong exterior, it's like I don't need a man. I can do it. I can do it on my own. I will do this. I will do that. I will do that. It's a it, it sends a message, but that is not normal because every woman they, they they have something they call in psychology anima and animus. Anima refers to the woman. Animus refers to the man. And what they mean is that. When a woman meets a man, sometimes they naturally tend to behave like uh, they are vulnerable. It's like 
uh, if let's say they are going somewhere, they see a lizard, she will hold a man's hand. Yes, just a lizard will come and pass, and she will say, "Hey!" Then she will hold the man. Sometimes it's not because she's afraid. Sometimes it's just that thing that is coming out. I need a protector. Somebody must protect me. And you are the one who have signed that you protect me. So if you are going somewhere and a car is coming and you run and leave her, she will, she will know that you are not a protector. That instinct is not in you. Yes. I mean, that's why men always die for love and women never die for love. <laughs> Look at Romeo, look at uh, Titanic, look at uh, who? Who? Samson, even Adam. All these guys, they die for love. <laughs> the women will never die for love. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, then, because of the, the, the way we have been made, look, if I'm here, I'm just talking about physical, the physical things. Look at it. The, the physique, just the way God has made us, you see this thing in us. Then also, you will see that the woman, because of the way she has been designed, you will see that she has an instinct to nature. It is normal with every woman. She has an instinct to nature because she has, that's her purpose. Remember, I'm saying that physiology is, it affects more than physical bodies. I mean, the psychology of it, the emotional stuff, everything comes in. So when you see a woman, every woman has a mother in her. Every woman has a mother in her. They, they have that instinct to nurture. Sometimes they will come across as trying to control. It's actually a motherly instinct. That is manifesting. That's why even when we come around like this, who are the people who will take care of food and all that? It's women. <laughs> it's women. Do you know why? If, 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 if a group of men come here, let's say this whole place, we are all men, and then we have met, you will see that it can happen that from morning to evening, nobody will have the mind to think that, oh, how can how are these people going to be catered for? For men, everybody will take care of himself. I mean, we'll just pass some corner somewhere and then take some uh, food that will come. Oh, we meet, that we talk. Oh, Charlie. But when if there's one woman among the men, she will immediately start thinking about how these men will be catered for. It's natural. It's, it's a motherly instinct. So you realize that your mother, for instance, look at your mother. How your mother would, um, how your mother relates or does things, you know, to you, even if you're a guy. Then it's the same thing. Your wife is the same thing because it's a, it's a maternal instinct. So your wife will care about what you eat. I've never called my wife and said, have you eaten? I, I've never, I don't remember having done that before. Then maybe I'll call her, and as I've called her, the first thing is, uh, have you eaten? Okay, for that one, maybe I'll what did you eat? I won't ask that question. But any time my wife will call me, even when, I, let's say, I'm, I'm traveling, when I come back, or something, when she closes from school and I'm in the house, she will call me, have you eaten? He will say yes. The next question is, what did you eat? So sometimes, in order not to answer the next question, you have to see, see how you answer the first question. <laughs> because the next question will definitely follow, what did you eat? You know, and uh, that one is not like she's controlling. That one is care. That one is care. I get it. So women are naturally caring. Naturally. That's why they are caterers. Most caterers are women. You no, know, they cater for events. They cater for that's it's a natural instinct. It's if you don't understand their purpose, you understand why they behave the way they behave. So you will see that when a woman begins to malfunction, the care will become control. 
That's why when Adam and Eve sinned, God told Eve, He said, Your desire, you see, uh, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception, and your desire shall be for your husband, and he will control you, he will, he will rule over you. What he was trying to say is that you will desire to control him. Your desire shall be for his head. Your, your, your desire shall be for his authority. But because he too is in a fallen state, he will also rule over you. He will also control you. So subjugation of women came after the fall. After, before the fall, Adam never subjugated Eve. Adam never ruled over Eve. No. He led her. He led her in love. But after the fall, then man started dominating woman. Because woman too started controlling man. Why? Because women have a natural instinct to care. So, she will care for you. I mean, she will care. Even she will. And I, I, I was watching a, a video of a man and a woman. They were married for 13 years. Short, short clip. Then, one, one day, the man said he was leaving. He was leaving. Then, he had, they had a 13 year old boy. And the boy was staying with the mom. And the man told the woman that I'm leaving because of your constant nagging. Because you always want to tell me what to do. I can't do anything I like in this house. You are always telling me do this, don't do this, do this. And the woman said, that's no nagging, that's caring. Then the man went and rented a, an apartment close by. So the guy, the boy, their, their son had the privilege of either staying with the mom or staying with the dad. So, you know, a 13-year-old boy, you know, he's now a teenager. So, the mother was, you know, giving him some restriction. Then a guy too said, I, I'm tired of you controlling me. When, when, when it's time for his studies, he will, he, he will want to eat ice cream. The mother says, no, you can't eat ice, uh, ice cream. Now, food will be ready in five minutes. Wait for food and, and eat the food. No sweet before meal. Then the guy will be, will be, will be upset. You know, he said, I want to, can I, can I use my iPad? The mother will say, no, you have your exams, mass exams coming. You can't use your iPad. And the guy, so the guy too said, I want to go and live with my dad. Because I'm tired of your nagging. So you see what they call nagging. Okay. So the guy went to the dad. When he got, he got to the dad's home, he said, daddy, where should I sleep? The dad said, oh, here in this house, no restriction. You can either sleep on the floor or sleep on the couch. Sleep anywhere. So then he said, uh, can I have ice cream? He said, sure, go to the fridge. So there's food. When he opened the, the fridge, all that was in the fridge was Diet Coke and ice cream. Plenty of them. And he kept eating ice cream, eating ice cream. Then he said, can I play with my iPad? The, 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 father, the father said, I've told you, no restriction here. Do whatever you want. That, that's the joy of living alone. That's the joy of being a man. Do whatever you want. So the, the guy said, you know, I have, I have, a, I have, I have a math exam coming anyway. So let me. So he took the math book to read. Then he said, oh, I'm tired. The guy, the father said, oh, you feel free, whatever. And the following day, the guy came out with a report card. He had gotten an F. He was so down. The father said, oh, what is, what, what, what is it? I mean, me, I never made it through. So. What is, what's the big deal? I mean, in this, be, enjoy yourself. What is it? But then the guy realized that he was developing some stomach upset because of the ice cream he had been eating and all that. The one day he ran to the mother. When he got there, then he told the mother that, you know, I miss your rules. The way that she was trying to, you know, restrict movement, do this, do that, do that. It was actually caring, but he, he, he came across as nagging. So sometimes women, because of the motherly instincts, they, they are supposed to care. When they go overboard, they can actually smother, you know, smother you with love. When say somebody has smothered you with love, it's like now the person is um, suffocating you with care. Now the care is too much. So there's a, there's a point where care can be too much. You can be so caring that the person, for instance, if you're a parent and you are, you are so caring, you become overprotective. You won't even allow your children to do anything. 
You know, for instance, I realized that I had a problem with that. You know, if when if I was to live with my children alone, like if I was to live with them alone, there are many things they will not learn how to do. Because I like doing things for myself. If it's water, I will go to the fridge, get the water and drink. If I eat, I will wash. If I want to take this, I will walk and go and take. But their mother will send them, look, go and do this. Go and do that. Go and do that. Go and do that. So then I realized that if I was to just live with them alone, there are many things I wouldn't let them, because I would think that I'm even bothering them. I wouldn't let them do those things. But you see, the, the woman, she knows that she has to teach this, do this, do that, do that, do that. Do that. Meanwhile, those things that I am, I am able to do for myself, it was because I was made to do those things that become part of me. I get in. Then also, another thing about men and women, look at when a girl is growing up, when a boy is growing up, Girls and boys, do you know who starts talking earlier? It's girls. Girls start talking earlier than boys. One powerful weapon God gave the woman is her mouth. Yes. Because they are not, you see, they are not strong in their hands, but they are strong in their mouth. They are strong because the thing is that uh, the realm of womanhood, you know, is, is the realm of the emotions. Okay. Now, if girls start talking when they are growing, they, they start talking earlier than guys. You see that the girls, they can talk, really talk, but the guys take their time to talk. It's also because of the purpose. Because now, um, um, because of the way the woman has been designed to carry, the woman has a womb. Not only a physical womb, also a spiritual womb. Because the physiology is just a reflection of what is in the psychological or the emotional. So women have wombs where they keep things. Now, if a woman is not allowed to talk, it means she has to keep and keep and keep and keep and it will get to a point where she can't keep it anymore. Because when the thing is in the womb and the thing gets to a point, it must be released. So when the heart is full, it finds expression in the mouth. That's why women talk more than men. So when there's an issue right now, the first thing the woman wants to do, let's talk. The last thing the man wants to do is to talk. You see the difference? The woman will say, I want to talk. Because if she talks, the more she talks, then she's releasing the thing. Then she's releasing the thing. But the man too will not want to talk. The, man, the first thing the man will do is to withdraw, to go and think. Think through. The woman will say, no, let's talk first. So if you watch Ghanaian movies, you see that when there's, there's a disagreement, you see that the woman will say, we have to talk. The man will pay the khaki. The woman will say, why are you going with the khakis? Stay here. We, we have to talk. There's always that disagreement. Okay. So women are good with their words. Men are good with their, with their hands. Still on the physiology. Now, the male has been designed to lead. The female has been designed to support. That is how God designed the man. How God designed the woman. You see, um, when, when uh, God created man, man was created first. Even in hierarchy, the man was a firstborn the woman was the last born in, in, God, in God's creation. Hierarchy. Man was created first. So naturally, man was the leader. Eve came to meet Adam in the garden. So Adam naturally
taught Eve about many things, including God's commandments not to eat this tree and all that. So the man had been designed as a teacher. As a teacher. The woman had been designed as a student. Even though she's a mother, she has been designed as a mother, the man is a teacher. Now, one thing that teachers don't like is to challenge them and to let them appear as if they don't know anything. That's why there's always confusion when a woman challenges a man. That's why the Bible says women should submit. Otherwise, they won't teach. Are you, are you getting it? Yes, because the thing is that one thing a, a teacher hates is to be told is, 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 is to be, for instance, if you are teaching people and let's say that you are teaching them but they um, they don't allow you to teach them. See? And they want to tell you that you don't know anything. Yeah, the teacher becomes angry. So every male must have or has, every male has the instincts in him to teach, to lead, to show the way. Sometimes even when they are getting it wrong, they will still pretend they are in charge. That's, that, is, that is an instinct. That's an instinct. So for a woman to get the attention of a man, listen, and to get the man to do something or to show the man something, the woman must first of all come as a student. Then as a student, then she presents what is in her mind, in her head. Then the man will readily or easily take it than to come across as if you are teaching him something. I don't know whether you get it. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you are uh, you are a teacher. Then you have students. Then there's this student who go attends extra classes somewhere. And what you are teaching, he comes and then he, you know whether it's a question or a contribution. So I have a question. Say you are wrong. This, this, this you are doing is wrong because x cannot be equal to two because this, this, that the coefficient and the the uh, the square root of this is this, this, this. How would the teacher feel? The teacher will feel. I mean, because it's like you are teaching me. I'm a teacher. You are teaching me. But if the student comes and he says, "Sir, uh, uh, my hand is up." Thank you very much, sir, for your teaching. In fact, you are really uh, helping us uh, to understand uh, quadratic equations. And uh, please, the x there, what is, uh, what, what is the value of this x and this? And can you please go over? There's a way the student will, will present the question and the teacher will know that he is wrong, but he will not, be, he, he will not feel disgrace. True or false? It's true. So if you want to get a man's attention for him to listen to you, you must go as a teacher, not, a, not as a student, not a teacher. Because, yes, in the same way, you see, if a woman, if you are a man, and you are leading a woman, you should be in a place of a teacher. You must be able to provide certain answers to certain questions. See, when a woman asks you, that, okay, this, what are we going to do about this? You should be able to give her answers. Okay, sit down. We are, this is what I plan. We are going to do this. Do that. Do that. Do that. That's a teacher. Sometimes the woman will ask your opinion. She will ask your opinion because she looks up to you as a teacher. And even if you don't know, you can tell her that I don't know, but I'm going to find out and let you know. Sometimes she will tell you things that people have told her. And then she's expecting you to say something or to give an explanation or a, a view. So, I don't, what do you think about it? Oh, I don't, I don't, nothing. I don't think, I don't think anything. 
<laughs> I mean, I mean that's a teacher that you have just you know denied that you were a teacher. I get to you. So because of these differences, they are, they are always they, they constantly they are always friction because we don't understand the, the the woman will not understand that the man is supposed to teach. The man will not understand the woman. The, the woman is supposed to be a student, or he is supposed to teach. You see, so there's a vacuum of leadership. Anytime there's a vacuum of leadership anywhere, whether it's the home, whether it's the uh, business, whether it's the ministry, whether it's a, 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 a society, a, a country, anytime there's a vacuum of leadership, you will see that two things will happen. Number one, you will see the spirit of Jezebel. The, you will see the spirit of Jezebel ruling. Because there's, there's no clear direction, no clear leadership. There's a vacuum. Men are supposed to lead. If you're a man, if you're a guy here, number one, you must demonstrate boldness. You must demonstrate boldness. Not foolhardiness, boldness. I'm not saying take unnecessary risk. What I'm saying is that you must demonstrate the ability to be in charge, to lead, to be in charge. If, if, uh, Everybody is afraid and they are running to you. And you too, you are also afraid, you are also running. Then who is the leader? Are you getting me? At least for you, you must demonstrate that. Even you may be afraid, but demonstrate that, well, everything is in, in control. Just relax. Just relax. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. Then that, that is a leader. Are you getting me? You are inspiring hope. It's not like when the thing is, then you are you too, you are rather joining the chorus. No. So every man must demonstrate leadership. One thing ladies look out for is leadership. They, are, they, they, they want to be led. Just, just that if, if there is vacuum of leadership, the spirit of Jezebel, you see, because the woman has a maternal instinct, whenever there is no decisive leader, the woman will take over. And then she will begin to dictate and to lead because nature abhors vacuum. So every every now and then there must be that the, this decisive, you know, leadership. That okay, this is a direction. This is this. This is that. There cannot be two heads. The Bible says the man is the head. Do you know what the head means? The head means many things, including direction. The head is the is the one that carries the burden, the responsibility. The, the head carries the eyes to see, to, to, to chart a path, to show the way. The head is the one that thinks, thinks solutions. That's the head. So being the head is not like being a boss. It's being the thinker, it's being the, the direction. Okay. So if you are not prepared to lead, the woman will not be prepared to follow you because she will see that you can't protect her. You can't lead her. You can't lead her. So these are things that... So you too, when you look at a woman, the woman is somebody you must have the capacity to lead. See, there are plants that must be grown, that can be grown indoors. Are you getting me? There are some flowers, they can be grown indoors. There are some flowers, they can be grown indoors. They must be grown outside. If you bring such a flower indoors, what happens? It grows, it grows, and then it creates problems. Or maybe it, it grows by climbing. That's why they provided space. It needs sunlight. So if you try to put it down inside, it will climb and climb and climb, and then the whole place will be clumsy. But there are some plants, they grow, flowers, they grow better when they are exposed, when they are outside. Others also grow better when they are inside. Like the man is the plant outside. The woman is the plant inside. That's how God created it. There are some trees in the garden, in the forest, that, that thrive on shade. If there's enough shade, they flourish. There are some trees, if there's enough sunlight, they flourish. So the protector must face the sunlight, the heat. The one that's be protected must be shielded. There are certain things the woman should be shielded from. Certain things a man should bear them and carry them. 
you know, and the woman should be shielded from them because of the way God has designed the two of us. You know that Eve was not supposed to take anything Adam did not give her. Because Adam was supposed to be the giver. Like I said that even the sex organs have been structured that the male one is to give, the female to receive. Don't be don't be angry when a woman ask you for something. Don't be angry. That's because you are you are supposed to be a giver. <laughs> Somebody said, "Amen." <laughs> you are supposed to be yes. You see, you know that even if your friend, let's say you are in a relationship, she has money. There are times when sometimes she will ask you for something. Not because she doesn't have, but because she reveals in the fact that you are supposed to provide for her. See, so when Eve gave Adam the fruit, Adam should have asked her, who gave you that? Because I didn't give, I didn't give it to you. So where did you get it from? Then he would have found out that I, another person was talking to his wife. Because what I've not given you, why are you bringing it to me? I get you. I remember I, uh, Dr. Mars Moreau said something. He said that the woman has been designed to multiply whatever you give her back to you. And then he, he, made, he gave us some examples like give a woman a house and she will give you a home. Give her a sperm and she will give you a baby. Give her trouble and she will multiply the trouble to you. Because that's why, that's why they speak more words. If you analyze the speakings of a man and the speakings of a woman, they are different. You see, a woman speaks by um, summing things up. You see, by summing things up. They speak by summing things up. Men literally tend to speak more literally. More literally. So, if let's say a woman calls you twice and you don't pick, she will say that, I've been calling you, you haven't been picking. But it's only twice that she called and you didn't pick. But she will say, I've been, so for her, it's not like, it's not the act of not picking, it's the summation, the summary of it. What does it mean? Does it mean that my call is not important enough? Are you getting me? Does it mean that if why are you not picking my call? That, does it mean that you don't like my call? But the man will just say that, oh, I called, I called, I called you twice. Oh, or just just twice. I mean, I, I get me. But the woman will say that I've been calling you since. That's why people sometimes say the woman they nag. It's not like they nag. That that is that is how God made them. They do with summary, summary of things. A woman does a woman looks at what something made her feel. That's, that's, that is what registers in her mind. What a person made her feel. Now, it, it, it's not about the act, but it's about the effect. So it's like, oh, he made me feel special. So that will register in her, in her mind. So, some, so whenever he sees this person, it's like, oh, this person makes me feel special. I get to it. So you may, you may see a guy, you see that this guy the guy is very bad. Hmm? Very, very bad. And you want to understand why a lady is more like, like interested in the guy. The guy is a bad person. You know that this guy, he's swindling this lady. I mean, he's deceiving her. Even She can even steal. If she gets up, she will, she will steal from her and all that. But because he makes her feel special, that is, that is what registers in her mind. So sometimes before he, she comes to herself, she has given everything to the guy. And the guy has robbed her. Not because she's naive. No, 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 no. See, sometimes people say that, oh, women are naive. No, never say that. Never, never say that a woman is naive. Women are deeper than men. I, I, I'm going to show you. They are deeper than men. 
you you never know how deep a woman is. They are deep. But because they are feelers more than thinkers, they feel first before they think. So how things made them feel, it registers more than what actually happened. So sometimes the effect of your words is more important than even the words. The effect, what, how she felt. That's why we, we say that women are moved by what they hear. So when you say sweet words, that women like sweet words. It's not the words, it's how she felt. How she was made to feel special. That's, that's what is in her mind. Okay, so when you compliment a woman, it's not just the compliment that she's looking at. She's really looking at how you have made her feel special. So, you must learn how to compliment a woman. Learn how to compliment. A woman too must learn how to compliment a man. But that one is not about his looks or his appearance. It's about his abilities. See, when you, when, you, when you compliment a man on his abilities, there's nothing he can do. Have you heard this thing before in, in, in Indian films? Have you, have you heard that? <laughs> when Shaka sees his girlfriend, the way the power will come. Why? Because she's complimenting, making him admiring his, his abilities. Listen, men also need to be complimented. But their compliment is not in how they look. It's in their ability. If you tell a man that, hey, the way you are able to do this, <laughs> it's very nice. I mean, hey, the way you just did this, hey, the way you solve this problem, the way you, you will make you feel big. And there's nothing that he won't do for you. Yes, be, yeah, yeah, because if, let's, let's say that my brother is, is in the bodybuilding, then he says that sometimes there, there, there are some guys who come and ladies come with them. And he said that sometimes when the ladies start complimenting uh, how strong they are, they carry weight they can't even carry. <laughs> They can carry what they can even carry because of the compliment. But for a lady, their compliment is making her special. And it's not, it shouldn't be something that you don't mean. Listen, it shouldn't be something you don't mean because you'll be found out. You'll be found out. Like I said, women are deep, deeper than men. You'll be found out. <laughs> so it, it should not be fake compliment. Eh? Do you know that um, men are not as um, affected by people's compliment or people's talks about their looks as women are? Two of us. Yes. See, a woman can look at a man and say something about his stomach or about his uh, the way he's becoming fat. His head. <laughs> yeah, it will not, it will not really affect the man. What I'm saying, I'm not, it's not hard and fast. There are some men that it can also affect them. That's why I said, I'm talking about nature now, not nature, nature. But naturally speaking, if, but if a man passes one negative comment about a woman's body, her stomach, or her head, or her hairstyle, or her dress, her color combination, and you don't say it well, it can mess up her day. True or false? It's true. You can mess up her day, but for a man, it won't do anything. I mean, by who cares? <laughs> I mean, who cares? I get to be. But that's not how women have been designed. And do you know why it's like that? You see, the reason is that in God's wisdom, even though the man is the keeper of the territory, the woman is the owner of the territory. 
In God's wisdom, the man is the keeper, the man is the protector of the territory. Like they stand in the caves. But the women are the owners. Every woman is territorial minded. If you don't know this, look at even animals. When a dog gives birth, all of a sudden, the cage, she becomes protective of the cage. If you attempt to enter the cage, she can chew you, bite you. Are you getting me? Women are more territorial. A woman wants to define her territories. This is the territory. This is my territory. Especially their territory is uh, their, their husband and their children. You don't cross my territory. This is my territory. I'm in charge here. I'm the one who is the owner of this territory. The man is the keeper of the territory, but the woman is the owner of the territory. In every home, in every home, the woman is the owner of the home. The man is the keeper of the home, of the house. The woman is the owner. The, the woman's mood can affect the entire house. Yes, she can literally detect the direction of the mood of the house. That's why I say she's the owner of the house. Territory. And because they are, because they are territorial minded, every woman wants to control a territory. A woman doesn't want to share a territory with another woman. In fact, very few women can tolerate polygamy. Sometimes people become second wives, third wives, out of many factors. But I don't believe anybody will grow up thinking that I want to be a second wife. No. Nobody. Everybody wants to be a, the, the, the first. If I know the, not only the first wife, the only wife. How you get to me? That is how God, God designed the system. That's how God designed the system. That is why, that is why the woman wants to be the main person in your life. So sometimes, when uh, even not in a relationship, let's say friendship, that's why when she she calls and you don't pick, she she gets the step. Like Belinda was saying that when you you they don't give you the attention. Do you know why? The, the, the woman needs attention. Not that they want, they need attention because of the status God bestowed on the woman as the owner of the territory and let's say the one who controls the territory. Whenever they, they need to feel secure, they need to feel secure, they need the attention, they, 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 they need attention all the time. They want to be, they want to be heard out all the time. You see, so, it's very important that we know the differences. If you don't know the differences, you are likely to fall into trouble. Because, for instance, you, you want to marry. Know that, see, there are certain things that no matter what, you must know. For instance, know that for a woman, the impact of your words is very great as a man. Especially if she loves you. See, the impact of your words is very great on her. So when you look at a woman and say, mm, what have you done to yourself? Ah, what is this? Like a caricature. What, what is this? Oh, what is this? Ah, this wig. Mm, what, what kind of wig is this? Hey, Ube Ube Chimariana. <laughs> hmm. Those words, they can impact negatively. And the worst of it all is when you criticize Something about the woman that is natural. Please know this. Never do that. Never say negative things about a woman. Things that are natural with her. Never say that. Never say that your hips are not big. Never say, I'm talking about in marriage, but even before marriage and even not as friends, never say those things. Never say those things. That you you are too short. Or you are too tall. Or your nose is too pointed. No, no, don't say that. Don't, don't say that. When you say that, that person will never come close to you. 
Are you getting it? Okay. Then also, another very important thing is the, diff- the, the way we communicate. It's very, <laughs> the way we communicate, we communicate differently. We com- That's it. I say that women are deeper than men. Women are deep. You see, I'm not trying to be uh, too uh, physical, but you see, the way God even made us physically, it 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 borders more on physique. It it affects our whole system, everything. Okay. Women are more. Women are deeper than men. In the sense that men are general, women are detailed. Men are general, women are detailed. So, when you give ma- a man a summary, he's okay with it. He only wants the main points. But the woman is not okay okay with summary. She wants details. She wants you to fill in. So know how to converse with the lady. You see, when you are conversing with the lady, it's not you. You don't just give the points. You have to add the emotions. You have to be a storyteller. You see, when you are teaching university students, or even SHS students, we call it uh, no university. You call it lecturing. So you are supposed to give you points. Uh, points. So factors that affect. Uh, economic what was one is this two is that three is this four okay these are then maybe you see something before then it's up to the student to go and research these days they give you notes and all that okay in our time they used to give us notes also so real lecturing ceased some time ago these days they do more of teaching but when you are teaching children for instance you don't lecture you add emotions See, you add emotions. You have to capture the moment. When you are conversing with a woman, you have to capture the moment. You have to let her, for instance, let's say that, okay, I went out, I met Nana Kavna, and we're conversing. And Nana Kavna told me something about, let's say, Nana Kufuado, three points. So he just said, oh, Charlie, Kufuado, one, two, three, four, four, four. Now, that is, when I'm communicating to a man, it's enough to say, Anakabna, I met Anakabna, and then he gave me these three points about the Kufuado, and you know, Charlie, this, 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 that. Then we all take the nursery points and then we go. But when you are communicating that to a woman, I met Anakabna, in fact, he was in a red top and some jeans, nice jeans, and we sat under the mango tree near the gate. You know, and this is what he was saying. And the way he was talking, you know, he was, he was, you know, he said this, he said that, he said that. You know, you, des- you are describing the moments, capt- picture. I mean, cap- capturing the moment, you know, giving the pictures. That is how we communicate to a woman. That's why sometimes there are some men that the women love to be around more than other. Men. There are some guys who are very straight to the point. They are very brief. They are very point one, point two, point three. That's all. But there are some people to who be conversing. You know, it's like he will give, he will say, then you wait for the effect. Then he will dramatize it. That's why men like people who crack jokes. Yes. Sometimes you see them. You see that they like people who are humorous. Is he will make you laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. You know, they are humorous. And you, know, you shouldn't be a joker. No, don't don't <laughs> don't be a joker. <laughs> but at least have some sense of humor. There are some, sometimes you can say things certain in a certain way to create humor, and it, it's kind of it, it must be kind of natural. It's not like you have gone to read a joke and you are coming to say it. You know. It's not like a joke. I mean, it's it's kind of natural. <laughs> I, I remember once I was telling my wife a joke and she didn't understand the joke. And 
and she was asking me questions about the joke. And I said, no, no, it's, it's a joke. Just laugh. <laughs> I said, I'm not saying for you to understand. I'm saying for you to laugh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, when, when you want to, when you, when you show your husband to your father, your father will, will, will ask just some one, one, two, three, four questions. And that's all. But you must make sure you show him to your mother. Because your mother will not just ask questions. She will see things. <laughs> your father will not see. Yes, because women, other times a woman are deeper than men. If a woman comes in an environment, her eyes will pick colors. Her eyes will pick colors. Her eyes will pick designs. Her eyes will pick the ambience, the environment. When, when you picture uh, guys and girls randomly, what is your, what is, what is the picture that comes? The, the woman will remember the ambience, how they felt. The men will remember maybe Foster's Spoken word. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Easy. Okay. Now, um, okay. Let me let me also say this. Um, spiritually speaking, the woman and the man are the same. There's no male spirit or female spirit. We are both capable of assessing God and the things of God equally, equally. If there will be a difference, the difference will be our souls and our spirits, how we have been, we have, we have allowed them to uh, uh, affect our spirit, our, I mean, our makeup. For instance, we always say that women tend to be more spiritual or more attracted to spiritual things than men. Or let me use a, a loose term, more religious than men. Now, that is true. It doesn't mean that the woman's spirit is higher in terms of the, the capacity. No, it's the same. But their nature makes them more adaptable, adaptable to spiritual things than men because they are fearless before thinkers in spiritual things you don't have to think you have to believe with your heart before you think about it that's that's where that's why they score more points when it comes to things of the spirit if you are a logical person for instance you are a science student and you are a logical person you are you are very logical you know scientists are logical for god to get you to move in the Miraculous. He has to damage a lot of things the way you see things. Otherwise, you can never move in the miraculous. Because sometimes, no, not sometimes, all the time, when God is uh, moving in the miraculous, mostly it, it will be through the ridiculous. And it, it, it will mess up your thinking pattern because it, it will not be logical. It will not be logical. I mean, how logical is it for somebody who cannot walk to just walk by laying hands on the person? Or somebody who is sick to get healed by just laying hands on the person? I mean, it's more logical to take paracetamol or take uh, some medicine. I get to see me. But, so, the way we, are, the, we have been uh, structured, we allow it to affect our spirituality. But, women and men, we are both heirs of the grace of life. As first first Peter three seven says, so we can both assess the, the 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 life and the light of God. So a woman, a woman can be used by God just as a man can be used by God. And you know the Bible doesn't place a distinction, okay, when it comes to being used by God or when it comes to being uh, assessing God when it comes to growing in the Lord. 
agreeing in the things of God and all that. Women and men are on the same plane. On the same plane. On the same plane. A woman can preach. A man can preach. A woman can prophesy. A man can prophesy. A woman can heal the sick. A man can. Those things are not for men. Neither are they for women. They are for all of us. How you get to it? But when it comes to a, a, a man can can be an apostle, a woman can be an apostle, a man can be a prophet, a woman can be a prophet, and a woman, a man can be a pastor. A woman is a pastor, not lady pastor. She's a pastor. Are you getting me? Those terms are not male terms; they are generic. Even prophet, a woman too is a prophet, not a prophetess. Even though the Bible in the in the Bible in the Old Testament there were prophetess. Like Naomi, like Isaiah's wife was a prophetess. Okay, but in the New Testament, you see that the word that is used is prophets, and it's standing for both men and women, evangelists, men and women. So, in terms of spirituality and in terms of academic pursuit, the brain of the man is not higher than the brain of the woman. Neither is that of the woman higher than that of the man. No. No. It's never true. In fact, even science science has confirmed and discovered that the brain is the same size. I mean, the woman is also capable of pursuing academics. Gone, gone are the days where women could not do science. Not that they couldn't do. They didn't want to do science. You see, because they were... You see, no, you know why? Because they wanted easy things. Because of their nature. God created them to be receiving, you know, so they always want comfort. So science will call for you to, you know, be doing calculation and all that. So the woman will always go to the reading service where you can just lie down and read. You don't need to go to the lab, you don't need to do this. But now, because they step up education, I mean, the, the education on educating the girl child, now the, the boy child is rather suffering. The girl child is going to school. Many girls are going to school and doing many great things. I get it. So, so never remove that thing from your mind that men are higher in terms of IQ. It's never true. Never true. Never true. Women are also capable of pursuit. And in fact, Women these days, even they tend to do better than the guys. Yes. It's true. Okay. I've talked about the spiritual. It's okay. Now, but the difference is in the difference in this. Let's say a woman is a pastor. A man is a pastor. A man leading a church. A woman leading a church. If both of them are under the influence of the Holy Spirit and they yield completely or more to the Holy Spirit, you will not see defects. But when they go into their natural selves, you will see certain defects because the man was naturally made a leader, the woman was not. So you will see certain effects. You will see certain limitations. Sometimes you will see cliques in the church. You see formation of cliques and sects, factions in the church. You will see grievances, bitterness in the church. We got women leading women. They have proven to always create problems, most of the time, create problems. You know, it's not because of anything, but because the leader, the man was designed to be the leader. In cases where the woman is leading, even she will rely on the support of men around her to give her some stability when the emotional emotions try to take over. Because sometimes there are certain things that will need a clear decision devoid of emotions. But women are emotional creatures. Men are more of mind creatures. 
So in, in that regard, the, when you talk about that, then you always talk about their various individual strengths. That the man is stronger in this area, the woman is stronger in this area. For instance, if a woman is a resource, human resource manager or human resource director, you will see that she will be very you know, effective in that role. Because of the motherly instinct, because she has to care for human beings, care for people, and she will do it naturally. If a woman is in the marketing department, because of the flair for talking and all that, she can flow, flow. If you put a woman in charge of discipline in a company where there are men, problems will arise. Problems will arise because when when you are you are displaying emotions, it affects your actions. Apart from that, there's there's no difference. Now let me come to this one, then I'll allow you to ask questions. There's also a difference when it comes to sexual response, sexual. Um, um, let me say, yes, response to sexual stimuli. So, the man and the, and the woman are different when it comes to, I mean, in that regard. The male has been designed to be sexually ready and um, ready by sight and imagination. Listen. By sight and imagination. So that's why when you are with brothers, be careful the way you dress. Be careful the things you say. Say because imagination too plays a part. Sometimes you see certain dressing, certain dressing of women, and it's, the dressing is seasoned. Teasing. It's not like the person has exposed herself, but the person is teasing. What we call flirting. The person is flirting or teasing. So it's like you have to complete the picture. So when you see it, you have to use your imagination to complete the picture. It creates arousal in a man. That's not the case with a woman. So we have to be very careful. The, for the woman, the woman will respond more to the words and the touch. So that's why we, we should, be, should be careful about the movement of your hand as a man around a woman. Be very, very careful. Be measured, very measured and very calculating because you can easily touch wrong parts to initiate certain responses. And if you keep touching and you don't stop, it will lead to something else. But for the man, it's just sight, the eyes, what you see, what you imagine. And this thing is not devilish. It's an act of God. I mean, it's a creation of God. It is God who made it so. God made the man like that and the woman too like that. Even in animals, do you know that usually it's the males who pursue the females during mating for mating? With the exception of some few species where the woman rather pursues the, uh, the I mean the female rather pursues uh, the male. But with all others, including the human species, it's rather the male who pursues uh, the female. The lizard, uh, the agama lizard. When he sees the female, he starts displaying his colors. And the female is attracted. That's mating. The, the, the frogs, they, 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 you know their sound, that croaking sound. That's what they used to call the females. They used to attract. When they hear that sound, they become. So we see that at night, you see the frogs making sounds. Uh -huh. yeah. But all other animals, the the, the 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 even the cock, the cock 
We have to display his colors before he meets mouth the, the chick uh, the hen. You know that they will spread their wings like that. Have you seen that? They are displaying their colors. They are trying to tell her that look, this, this is what I have, you know. <laughs> look at my wealth. <laughs> yeah. So now so if it's very easy for you to be suggestive. And that's one thing that we must guard against. The 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 man, the woman, like some like Ella was saying that there are some guys, if you become nice, then they think that maybe you are interested in them, and then they will start withdrawing. And it, it, it shouldn't be like that. It's because of the way the guy is thinking. See, the woman becoming nice. Some I talk about nature. Per your nurturing, you can have certain stereotypes and certain mindsets which will not help you in your relationship with the opposite sex. Let me give you an example. There are some guys, because of their nurturing, when I say nurturing, I mean, I'm talking about how you have psyched yourself and the socialization, the orientation, and all that. There are some guys who, because of their nurturing, they rather want attention. They always want attention. It's not supposed to be so. Because it's women who need attention. But the guy, because of the nurturing, sometimes because of the things maybe he missed in growing up, or the environment he grew up in, he has come to need attention. So some some men are, have attention deficiency disorder. It's like they crave attention. Always they want the spotlight to be on them. Okay, such a person when he meets a woman he rather thinks that the woman should pursue him. I get you. So when a woman is becoming nice to him, then he goes like, <laughs> you look at them, hey, uh, she likes me. She, you know, oh, that she's doing because she likes me. You know, because she likes me. It, 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 it's because of the wrong nature. So you have, you have come to think that you are the, at the center of, excuse me to say this, but if let's say you are an only child, hmm? who is an only child here? A male. No, a male. A male. Okay. <laughs> Bishop, you are lying. <laughs> I don't know if I'm only child. Frederick, are you an only child? One child. Oh, okay, that's good. So you 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 will get all that attention. Now, the thing is that if there are people, some of the people who are maybe a guy who is an only child. Um, all he the center of all the attention. Mom, dad, uncles, aunties, everybody like oh, uh, Paco Joe, uh, Junior, you know, <laughs> he's the only center. Of, so he absorbs all that. So he grows thinking that I must be the center of attention all the time. So when he goes to school, for instance. He will start having problems with his friends because either you must give me your attention, I deserve your attention. You must, I'm, I'm the focus. I should be the object, the focus. So it creates problems too. If the person doesn't go through another form of orientation before he enters into marriage, he wants to be served, he wants to be pampered. He wants his wife to be there for him, but he not for his wife. You see, so it creates a situation that is not, um, that is that that does not augur well. I get you. Uh-huh. So people like that, they may have such issues. In fact, even in ministry, there are some people that you will realize that they have attention deficiency disorder. It's like whenever they are not the subject of attention. They get nervous. They get nervous. I mean, you if you are if you observant, you will see 
many. Sometimes uh, people will use things to co cover it, you know, and you know, it use things to cover it. But there, are, even there are some people, if even they are talking to you and they see that you are not, they are not getting your attention. They become nervous. There are even some preachers you have to help them to preach. How you get to? That is not anointing. This is nurturing. It's nurturing, not, not anointing. It's nurturing. There are some people, if they, they see the slightest change on your face, they, they start getting nervous. You know, and some, some ministers are into this. This one is for me. This one is not for me. This one is against me. This one is not against me. This one is disloyal. This one is loyal. And all that. Some of them are real, you know, from the Bible, but some of them too is attention deficient. You have everything must be on them. So when things are not on them, they become jittery. If let's say you came from a home, you grew up in a home where there was scarcity, you you can also become selfish if you don't go through another orientation. So it's like you must make sure you get as much as you can because you don't know when else you are going to get opportunity. So you hold on to things. You know, you, you grab things, scramble for things. It becomes a part of you wherever you go. Some of them can actually become positive, you know, and help you to make it in life. Especially in the area of business, in the competition. Some people are very competitive. Very, very competitive. So when they bring it to politics and business, it's like they are, they are very successful. But in the home, it will fill you. That's why everybody needs to go through discipleship. So that our nurturing, the nurturing aspect of our lives will be taken care of by our discipleship. So if you are, let's say, um, somebody who is... Uh, maybe as you were you, the way you, way you grew up, nobody could control you in a house as a lady. Nobody could control, nobody, nobody could say, "Hey, stop what you are doing. Don't go here. Don't go there." As a lady, no, go and sleep. No, nobody did that. So you you grew up with that kind of uh, mindset. That you are untouchable. You know, there are some people who can even pride themselves with that. In my micro home ground me, can we crunch him? Even my mother who gave birth to me cannot even say this to me. How dare you say this to me? Have you heard something before? Yes. In fact, <laughs> in fact, I know somebody who, when we were in school, he, he used to tell me that for him, when he sleeps, they don't wake him up. It, they don't wake him up till he has finished sleeping. And so, I remember when we went to Form 1, he was always late. And he was always punished. And later, they took him from boarding house. Later, I saw that I said, oh, they are rather compounding his problems. Instead of they allowing him to face it so that it can change him, you know, if you are punished like three times, you will not go about with that mentality that I for me, uh, nobody should wake me up when I'm, when I'm sleeping. I mean, next time you tell somebody, please wake me up when, when you are going for, like, going for classes. But they withdrew him from boarding house, and that was very bad. Because the boarding house is supposed to be a place where you, your rough, rough edges will be smoothing. You know, iron will sharpen iron. You know, you, you meet all kinds of people. That's, that experience, if you don't get that experience, is difficult. And so what will help is the discipleship for the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to nurture you. There are even people who grew up with a sense of inferiority and a sense of unworthiness. Do you know why? Because they were never accepted. They were never accepted. You know, they were never given any form of hearing. They, they always felt they were not important. They didn't deserve people's attention, people's ears. And all that. Now, that mindset can also affect you, not 
even only in marriage, but also even in business, everything, even in ministry. If, if you have a sense of inferiority and a sense of unworthiness, that you are not deserving of anything good, people will reinforce that mentality in your mind by also treating you as not deserving of anything good. And it will further reinforce that mentality. And so you always be reaping. It's a self-fulfilled prophecy. You always be reaping it. And you always believe that, ah, it's true. I don't deserve anything good. It's true. It affects your relationships, business. Have you seen people, you know, um, for instance, guys who are very, 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 let me use this word, excuse me, excuse my language, timid. Now, timid is not uh, reserved. No. When we say somebody is timid, it means that the person is fearful. He's always afraid. He's afraid. He's a, he's, a, he's a guy. He's a man. He's fearful. He's afraid. He's always afraid to even take a step. But that is timidity. Now, the Bible says God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. But there is something in boys. If you see boys, if you have watched the little boys around, and even, even in school, Look at what the boys always do. Look at the way they play. Very dangerous. When you see children playing, the, the guys are always very active. Very, they, they play dangerously. Kicking, rolling, jumping, moving here and there. You know. Now, if somebody is a child and the person is growing up as a boy, that thing is a male spirit of dominance, dominion in the child. If the parents suppress that and they try to make him conform to their so-called standards, I'm not talking about Christian standards. I'm talking about their so-called standards, rigid standards. They don't allow the boy to express himself. If, if you do this, they will, sh- they will shout at you. Keep quiet. Do this. The, the guy will recoil. A time will come, he will become timid. And when he becomes timid, it comes with his royalty complex. Now, he may try to fight it, but the more he tries to fight it, the more he compounds the problem. Because he comes out as rude, comes out as arrogant, comes out as not being a team player, comes out as being selfish. But you realize that the, the, the damage was done when he was when that spirit was killed. So if it's about ministry, he will never venture into new areas. If it's business, he will never venture. He will never take any risk. He will never venture to do anything. So it affects his leadership. That's not his makeup, but that's nurturing. The negative negative effects of of nurturing. So such a person, when you meet such a person, you will see that the person is sensitive the person is insecure because whatever you do, that sounds like you are giving the person instruction or you are showing the person something. The person will take offense. In fact, there are people who are very complicated to handle, not because they are bad, but because of the things they've gone through over the years. Do you know that if you have gone through verbal abuse for a long time, your ears have been attuned to verbal abuse? To start with, even compliments will never, I mean, you, 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 you will not even be affected by compliments. You have to gradually change through the word of God, the Holy Spirit, change to, to now begin to see how to receive love. There are people who cannot receive love. They can't be, I mean, they can't stand to be loved. And some also cannot give love. But you can't give what you don't have. You see, so there are some people, when you are showing them kindness, they misinterpret your actions. How you get to me? You see, excuse my using this example. If a lady has been uh, abused, excuse my language, excuse my example, has been abused by 
um, let's say, before, abuse growing up before. Okay. Now, um, how is she going to interpret love? Okay, let me use this example. Somebody was abused, as an example, by a person who was old enough to be her father. Let's say the person was old enough to be her father and the person abused her sexually. Now, do you think she can easily receive love, real love, from an elderly person? No, she can't. She can't. So that's why even in psychology, uh, not psychology, even in parenting, uh, when you read certain books on parenting, they will tell you that you shouldn't use your hand to beat your, your child. I mean, we do it, but then it's, it's wrong. Your hand, don't use your bare hand to beat your child. They say you must always use either a cane or something that is not harmful, like a stick or a, 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 a comb. Anything that can inflict pain, you know, without hurting him or her. But when you use your hand, to slap your child. Next time you want to give the person a hug. I mean, it's those same hands you use to slap him that you are using to wrap around him. So how is he going to interpret your hug? He's going to reject your hug. So when people reject your love, your affection, there are some people even using words of endearment on them is dangerous. You have to study people and know where they are coming from and then know how to help them to get to a point. Because there are some people, for instance, if you use certain words, sweetheart, hello, um, I'm not talking about people that you are in a relationship with. I mean, some people use those words. I mean, they just, just use those words, you know. I, I remember I, I, I had a friend. Uh, he was our LPU president. It was a guy who went the same hall. Whenever he sees me, he calls me sweetheart. <laughs> I was kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> he said, sweetie, how are you? <laughs> and he was, he was our president, you know. He was our president. So I, I, it was later that I got to understand that, no, no, he was talking from the point of a Christian brother, you know, expressing love, okay. But then, because I'm not used to I mean, I, I think that it's rather the opposite sex, you know, like if you say that to a guy, you know, people, some you know, it's like, but you, a guy can look at a guy and say, I love you, brother. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love you, sister. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, don't begin to cook things in your mind. I mean, what, 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 what do you think he's saying? He's just saying he loves you. If somebody passes a compliment, don't be quick to think that the person is trying to communicate something. I remember Prophet of Okunisi, I was ministering. <laughs> and then, as he was ministering, you know he's a prophet, sometimes he, he would just get, just stand and look at one lady. You look at the lady, then he would take his eyes off. Then he look at the lady again, take his eyes off. So, he called the lady finally and then said that, in fact, <laughs> you know, in Ecclesiastes, there's something called apothecary. <laughs> okay, because I mentioned this, I won't say that. So, he called the lady, then he told the lady that, you see, I've been looking at you. I've been watching you from time to time. Then he asked the lady, what were you thinking? Why do you think I was looking at you? And the lady said, I thought maybe um, you were admiring me or admiring my, my beauty. Then she said that, he said that, no, I was trying to get the full message. And there's something called apothecary. That fly, when flies are in apothecary, you know, it's in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 or so. I think 10, yeah, or so. 10 1, yeah. And it was talking about a, perf a, a perfumer or a chemist. That's a 
King James word apotheki. But he he explained that there's an oil, there's something called oil of apotheki and it attracts flies. So as you are walking, flies are full of following. <laughs> You know, but she misinterpreted the looking to mean that the man was admiring her. But it may not be that he's admiring you. Some there are some people, even when you smile at them, I, I've noticed something. You see, there are people are in different categories. Especially when you are uh when I was teaching GHS, I used to see that a lot. There are some people they cannot look into your face. When they are talking to you, they can't. And you, sh- you should try to go over that. Try to look at people's face, look at their eyeballs when you are talking to them. Do you know that in America, for instance, if you don't look at people's face when you are talking to them, they take you to be a dishonest person or somebody who is not confident? Yes. So, you have different interpretations. So, being able to look at people's face. But, do you know that all these things, they are part of the nurturing. So, there are things that we need to correct. That's why you don't need to jump into conclusion when you, you experience something from somebody. Like I said, you are encountering the person at the chapter 7 of his life. You don't know what has gone on. If, if Jesus does not come in and there is no effective discipleship, People become products of the environment. And no matter what you do, you will be like that. And you will think that it's natural. But not knowing it's only nature, not nature. It's nature. It's how you have been nurtured. So, listen to the word of God and all that. They change us. Let me end with this example. Do you know that there are some people, have you asked yourself, why are some people very sensitive? In the first place, have you encountered people who are very sensitive? I mean, extremely sensitive. They can't stand you teasing them. I mean, if you ever tease them, if you ever laugh at their mistakes, I mean, they are dead. They are off. They will just tune off, just withdraw. They can't stand it. Is, 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 is it real? Like, are there people like that? Yes. There are people. <laughs> there, are, there are people who are very, very sensitive. And sometimes, um, if even you say something and maybe your choice of words, they will get hurt. Now, that thing, it's not nature, it's nature. You see, even though there's a degree of that in certain personalities, but the extreme ones, it's only nature that has made it so. There's nobody who can say, I'm a strict, non humorous uh, specimen. Me, I don't, I don't have room for humor in my life, I don't have room for laughter, I don't have room for jokes. I'm very serious minded. No, 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 no. There's nobody who's like that. You see, there are people who are more like that than jokler. See, you can have people who in their lives, they are very, very serious. No jokes. They are so serious that even when they come into an environment, everybody must conform to a certain kind of Strict, I mean, some perceived strictness. When they are there, you dare not, you dare not joke. When, there are people like that. There are people, there are even preachers like that. When they are preaching, you dare not laugh or do anything. I mean, they are so, they, I've, I've, I, I, I was, I was, I was, um, analyzing something. I was listening to the series I did on intimacy with God. Uh, I, I spent time listening to all the series before we started the fasting. From dwelling in the secret place to uh, a journey into the king's chamber 
looking into his face, Abba Father, the morning watch, ladder challenge, and all that. And I discovered, I listened to them in a row, like just one. And I was amazed that in every one of them, I laughed. And I said, how can you laugh in such a serious message like intimacy with God? And you are saying to people to laugh. And it's not like I intentionally did that. No, I don't intentionally create. No, it's, it's natural. I get TV. Because I was handling a very serious subject. But I was laughing in it. There are some people who would say that you can't talk about building intimacy with God and be laughing. I mean, it's, it's not a joking matter. It's serious business. This, this is serious. You have to be serious. And people can even have problems with that. Somebody, one man of God said that um, he sat in a car with one of, one of our members. And then he, he was engaging her in a conversation. And the, the member doesn't know this, you know, but the man of God told me. And he asked her name. And then he asked which church she attends. And then she said, uh, touch bearers at that time. So, the man of God also knows me. So, they started talking about me. Then, the man of God, uh, the lady told the man of God that one day, somebody came to their shop and I, the, the, he was playing one of my messages. And the person actually said, ah, what is this that this man is doing? Like, you are all laughing like that. Ah, why they, is he preaching that you are laughing like that? Then later he said, the guy stood there and said, hey, are you seeing some, some, some deep things? Bro? Hey, what he said? But the guy was criticizing my message because there was too much laughter. Like you are doing right now. That like people were laughing. <laughs> people were laughing, you know. So you're saying that it's not a serious thing. Why, why, is, why, why, why is that laughing? That there are some people who can't even entertain that. It, it, it shows that you have been seriously nurtured like that, you know. You can't stand a joke. So for such a person, if he's your friend or she's your friend, there's no room for teasing. Teasing is, 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 is teasing. Some teasings are not bad. They are not bad. I mean, you should be able to accommodate a joke. So check yourself. If you are that type who cannot accommodate a joke, that anything, you, you think that everything must be so serious, you, you can't accommodate a joke, then know that there's something wrong. Yeah, there's, because even Jesus, even Jesus was not all the time, you know, there were times when he was relaxed. Well, what do you think he was doing when he was around the task collectors and the prostitutes? You think he was, he was serious? He was eating, drinking, cracking jokes with them, you know, telling them jokes. He would tell them stories, you know, and all that. Okay, um, I'll end here. So if there are questions for the next 15 minutes, we take questions. Okay. Pastor, um, I want to know about um, there are some people who have. Uh, wrong definition for love or their level of uh, knowledge about what love is about is very limited. And some of these people have this um, uh, they, they, they feel like they deserve, to, they, they deserve to be loved in a certain way like entitlement. They are entitled to be loved or to be cared for in this particular way. So such people if you do something that is opposite to how they see love to be or how um, what they feel they are entitled to, they have a problem with you. You know, they, they can't accept that because that's not what they know to be love and all that. I want to know how um, 
such people, like you said, there's some people, if you make compliments on them, they feel like, what is this? You know, when I was growing up, I didn't see love to be this way. So it's weird, you know, and all that. So I want to know how best you can help such pe people like that who already have their own definition for love and they believe that they are entitled to such kind of love. And if you are trying to bring in something more or something different from what they already know, they enter into tantrums. Okay. I believe that uh, the Bible is the, the, the book that gives the most accurate description of love. And so teachings, teachings from the Bible can actually help people to reorient their minds and all that. You can also help the person by giving the person some information or some material or inviting the person to a seminar, you know, something. Then also, if the person is like uh, somebody who is close, let's say a wife or let's say a fiancé, you can sit down with the person and then you must begin to find out what the person calls love at this point. What the person calls love at this point. If it's a, something that is not sinful, and you can do for the person, you can start actually doing that for the person. For instance, some people may actually define love as service. Like I said about the book Five Love Languages, some people can define love as service. Some people may not even be so much enthused about verbal expression of love, even though they are even women, they may not even be so much enthused. I mean, they don't really care that much, but they 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 care when you have time for them. So if let's say that you are saying you love the person, but then the person has an issue that needs to be attended to, but you don't have the time to attend to, then the person will see that no, you are not truly loving, as you said. So you have to find out what the person the person calls love. You know, like for instance, um they they, they taught us in Sunday school that children spell love T I M E time. So when you have time for them, if you, when a child comes to you with an issue and you are able to have time to listen to her, they see it as love than maybe verbally telling the child that you love him or him. There are some adults also who also see love as ABC. So the, both women, men and women, I mean, uh, typically have what they define as love, but individually, people have what they also call love. Thank you. Called looking into love by just looking at the person. Now, I have tried so many times to overcome it, but it's not working. Now, I actually need help. How can I overcome it? Because when I'm preaching like this, like I can even call someone and, you know, it doesn't happen that way. I can look into that person's eyes while, while I'm preaching. Yeah, and because even you're looking at me face to face. Yeah. To every, um, when I'm speaking to everybody, it doesn't matter if the person is a male or female. That's it. So I don't know how to overcome it. I need help. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, I was like, even to add to it, uh, I learned that traditionally, if you are speaking to an elderly person and you're looking at the person, eyeball to eyeball is um, it registers disrespect. You should kind of put your eyes down and not stood, uh, and especially if the elderly is speaking to you. You shouldn't look at the person eye to eye. I mean eyeball while the person is talking to the person. And then you talked about how it contrasts with the um, European language. I mean, interpretation of that. Should, should, I mean, is it true or should we Still stay to you should look at the I mean look at the person I go to I bought and but I was rather thinking that traditionally if an elderly person is speaking to you and you are looking down like this, they say that you don't respect. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes sometimes it's it's cultural and or traditional, you know, but 
generally, generally speaking, uh, when you are able to maintain eye contact, maintain eye contact, it speaks a lot. Number one, eye contact indicates that you are listening. You are listening. When 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 some when somebody is speaking, and you are looking at the person, you are absorbing not only the words but the expressions and the body language. So what you can do is is it with every what about a child? So for a child to you can't look at a child's face. For a baby. Yes, so you can start with the child. You see, for instance, children yes. Yes. And then there are some people who are so close to you that you can actually do that. Some of your friends. No, some of your friends. Some of your guys, guys. You can actually practice with them. You can actually practice. Let me look at your face and tell you this. Then tell you this. You can, I can actually practice. Some of these things you have to practice. Yes. You have to practice. Be, because maybe it has become part of you because you've done it for a long time. But you can start from somewhere and gradually practice to perfection. Daddy, I want to ask, let's say, um, based on, um, <laughs> with a submission, and, like, a woman is supposed to submit to a man, and then a man is supposed to love the woman. So, let's say, in the case where, um, first of all, like, what is the submission? Because I think people have different ideas, like, everyone has his own definition of submission. And I want to know, let's say the submission, is it just respecting the person or you not even saying anything if the person says that, oh, do this, okay, say, like, do this, then do it, do this, then do or it's a matter of the person, like, oh, whatever, you, whatever, let's say, you want to say something to the person, you are like, oh, please, like, is it just saying please to the person that shows you respect the person or it's a matter of the heart, like, Within your heart, you know within yourself that you respect the person and you try to show in ways that you can, but the person who has different ideas about respect. Okay. In the first place, the Bible says that a woman should submit to her husband, not to a man, her own husband. And the man is to love his wife, not every woman. So, uh, the woman, the woman is not under any obligation to submit to every man. It's her husband, because not every man is her head. It's your husband that is your head. So the one that you have married, he's the one you must submit to, not the one you are going to marry. But when you marry, you must submit to the one you have married, because he has now become your head. And the submission, you know, all that I've talked about, they are on two lines. The man and the woman. The woman submitting to the man is that the woman keeps her place. She does not accept the place of the man. Look what Jezebel did to Ahab. Some there are some men who are laid back, a bit laid back. When I say laid back, it's not a bad thing. There are some people who they are they are men, but they are like that. They are more like the laid back type. They are not. Sometimes I have to even push them before they do what they do. And if you don't take care, as a woman, you might take his place. And even take his place to act and do things. Which you should seek his consent. Decide on the direction of the children, the family, without even telling the man. You are not submitting. Okay. If you don't respect his decisions, you don't respect. If he says something, you, you, I, you, you, you always want to. Uh, counteract what he has said. You are not submitting. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that the woman should be a doormat, somebody who cannot express herself. No, the woman is actually supposed to be a help. So you are. You are. When you are helping somebody, you. The, the main thing is there, and you are helping that thing. Okay. So you are. A, 
uh, paracletus, paraclete, like the Holy Spirit, somebody who comes alongside to help. The Holy Spirit is like the, the woman. He's also a helper. He comes alongside. He does not come to take over the thing. He comes to help with the thing. So when you run the whole sh- the main show, you are running the main show. See, for instance, if let's say that you are a wife, you are submitting to your husband, and your husband is leading people, let's say a company or a ministry, then you your husband is the one who is the managing director of the company or something. But then it, it happens that, let's say you are, because you are also, let's say, a secretary, you are working with your husband in the same company, then your husband is a leader. But because of a relationship, then you try to even take his place, try to fire people, you know, by the time your husband comes, you are fired this one, you know, you have employed this one without telling him and all that. You have usurped his position. That's not your place. I get him. So that is lack of submission. Not that you don't talk. No, no, no. Also, you see, if, for instance, like I said that the woman is the helper, it means that the man alone cannot make it. And if you leave him alone, he might go wrong. Because there's a saying that power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. So there must be a balance of power. Okay, so if you have all the power to do anything you want, and there's nobody to check you and to tell you that, oh, this thing is wrong, this thing I don't think is right, you are in trouble. So the wife should be of, of that stature, of that stature to be able to tell the husband that I think you are wrong on this. Are you getting me? You see, it depends on how you say it. Like I, that's why I say that you should not, if you want the teacher to listen to you, come as a student. So how you tell your, your husband that he, he's wrong is as important as telling him he's wrong. But he will know. Look at the way Abigail rebuked David and re- restrained him from co- committing murder, from killing Nabal. Look at the way Abigail approached David. At the end of the day, David realized that he had been a fool, like he had, would have committed folly. That's why when Nabal died, he went for Abigail because this is a wise woman. He knows how to enter the heart of a man. She counts as a student and then she teaches the teacher by coming as a student. She started by praising David and how God has used David and all the how she's even happy that David has. And then she said, please, don't waste your time on this fool for his name is Nabal. He's a fool. Don't, don't let it be like when God has promoted you, there will be bloodshed on your hands. Then he said, I bless God who sent me this day for you to cross my path. But David saw that that woman was not only beautiful, she was also wise. And when she heard that Nabal was dead, he says, get me Abigail for a wife. Then he added her to her, his wives. You know, so that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's the system I'm talking about submission. Who has a mic? Okay, and my last question is um, that deal with issues of, let's say, when you were talking about people who are firstborns and other things, and, and like there is some issue I want to address. Let's say this person is the only son to his parents. He doesn't have sisters. So it's like he doesn't even know how to share. Like when you ask him for something, he'll give to you. But it's like the person doesn't know and how to even do something. Let's say even if his cousins come to visit him, they want to sleep at his place, then he will vacate his room for them because he can't even sleep on the same bed with someone. Then you get so yeah. with such an issue, like if that person comes to you to tell you or try to like help him to address it, how do you go about it? Or even telling about when he was in SHS, who be in the conflicts back, then he gave the rest to the person because he that's like he has been trained like always he has to do it himself. So so in this way, how do you help such a person? <laughs> you know, I remember um at the university, um at that time I I belonged to 
I, we belong to a, a different church at that time. Um, when I was in second year, I had the opportunity to be in an inner room all by myself. And there was one of our church members who was an, a non you know, and they wanted him to come and patch me. And uh, I told them, no, I, I, I can't. Simply because I could not share the same bed. Because the bed was too small. When, when I sleep, I, the way I sleep, I cannot sleep straight like that. No, I can't sleep straight like that. So I have to put one of my legs, I have to cross, do a seven with one of my legs. <laughs> you know, so I, to, I told them that. In fact, they begged and begged. I said, no, no, no. I don't want to accept some that I will not feel comfortable. Number two, when I sleep with somebody on the same, at that time, you know, on this, by the time I wake up, I'll, you see that I will get kita. I don't know whether it's like when the, the person will breathe and I will be swallowing. Them, <laughs> you know, so because of that, I didn't like that. So I, I told them that if only he can bring his own mattress, then he can sleep on the floor. But to sleep on the same mattress, you can't you will come out because the bed is too small. Imagine for a whole year. One and a half inch, uh, one and a half inch, uh, uh, one and a half inches or something. This student mattress, then you are sleeping with somebody on the same mattress. So it's not a pleasant thing. I don't, well, I don't blame the guy much. But for the conflict staff, some people, some people who are like, what they call a here, it's like, yeah, they can't, you know, yes. That one too, it's, it's the upbringing. So secondary school, for instance, when I went to, uh, form, uh, form one, I never, I could never use somebody's spoon unless I wash it. Yes. Some, some of my friends, when you are eating, they want to come and take your spoon and use the spoon to eat, then give it to you. No, I mean, I won't give it to you. I'll, I, yeah, I'll tell you, go and bring your spoon. I could never put water, a bottle to my mouth that somebody had put to his mouth. I will never do that. But when I got to six form, then we were three in a room. Before I realized I was doing it, soakings, you know, we'll all soak Gary with milk, then we'll be, you know, so it will drop from our spoon, our mouth into the Gary, then we'll still eat. I mean, we had a we had one water bottle, one yellow bottle without any top. We'll fill it. This one gets there, then you drink. Another person gets there. So that thing ceased, you know, like it stopped. Sometimes it's sometimes because of the socialization, you know. But um, to 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 me, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God play a very major role in transforming people. So somebody somehow I would say that that's the that's one of the ways that person can be helped, you know. Uh, there are, there are some people, for instance, uh, the way they are. There was a guy in Form 1, the way he was, I mean, when you see him, he's our mate. The guy was very neat. Very, very neat. We all pick the ground and all that, but then his shirt would be so neat, tucked in. Neat. And I remember once uh, there was something, and I think somebody had to um, somebody came to sleep on his bed and it was, we had gone for classes and he came. It was not easy at all. The way he fought, I mean, with a person. Why? Because the bed, the, the bed sheet has been, uh, uh, yes. So he has some wrinkles and he was off. Now, if if he grows for that, he, uh, he might have a problem. You know, he might he might have to marry somebody who is also like that. Yeah, perfectionist. Otherwise, you have a problem. Daddy J, please. What's the difference between um, love and like and attraction and admiration? 
It's okay. Okay. Uh, love is um, the nature of God. Okay. But you, you, if you love somebody it's for the heart, you have the person's interest at heart. So you, you love a person uh, for who the person is. You have his interest at heart. Genuine interest. Then you like a person because of what he can do. Maybe for you. Or what he can do. So you like this person because he's very smart. Like, oh, for instance, somebody can say, ah, this person, I like him because when you send him, you come very fast. You know, some people can do that. So that is like. Like is fondness. You are fond of a person. It could be because of anything. Some, some people can like you because of your smile. Are you getting me? And because of the way you are, you are cheerful, always smiling. Oh, I like this person. He's likable. Then, admire. Admire is when you are, you are enchanted. So, admiration is uh, talking about, about attributes, qualities, and uh, values. So, you are enchanted by the person's attributes, the person's character, the person's things that are forthcoming with the person, like smartness, wisdom, cleverliness. You know, oh, I admire your, the way you are able to convince people to do things they don't want to do. I admire the way you are able to, you know, calm people down when they are, when they are angry. You know, that's uh, admiration. And then, what, what else? Yes, attraction is mostly, it's physical. So you can see somebody and the person is attractive to you. Not that you have feelings of lust, but somebody, even the way the person has dressed, so this this is this this is nice. It at, it has it, it is attractive, it attracts you. But you see, it ends there. Then you shouldn't travel. There are people you see and they look attractive. They look attractive, they look smart and attractive. But that, that's that's all. It must end there. You shouldn't continue. I get it. Attraction is very fleeting. It passes quickly. Fleeting. So you can't build a, a, a lasting relationship on attraction. You can't build it on like. You can't build it on admiration. But you can build it on love. When you genuinely care for the interest of the person he that's the same to you. Okay, how many have questions? Okay. Okay, uh, my question is on the, the attributes and the attributes of the male and the female we have to have. But then I I, I want to talk about the, the nurturing part. We are like the woman, uh, the lady in her has the nurturing in her male and the nurturing type. And I, I, about the nurturing is, is how it affects uh, us is, is, is very true. Me, for instance, I'm, I'm from a broken home. So when I came to the SHS and I had an opportunity to go to my dad's place, I found it difficult. I mean, it took me a long time to be able to call my dad, like call him dad. Like when he calls me, I was like, yes, yes. I can't add yes, daddy. He won't miss what I tried. I saw it before I was able to be like, yes, daddy. And the, the other thing was please. Please. Use the word please. Please. Like, yeah. I'm talking something like please. I suffered a lot. Before I was, so some of these things, I found it very difficult. But with time, I uh, fought and I was able to know how to use them. And so, me, I'm in the type that I have this kind of nurturing thing. Though I, I didn't kind of go to it because of broken and all of that. So, does it, I mean, uh, is it, is it, Unusual. Does it register any problem for you uh, guys to have some of those traits, traits or features or characteristics uh, of the lady and, and all of that, or register something wrong? Uh, of the lady, like what? Of the woman. You are like the woman is. They have nurturing kind of thing. They 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 they, they, they are supportive rather than being leaders. Like you mentioned that about eight eight points. Yeah. But I, I'm asking whether he said, is it normal for a guy to have those traits? Okay, like example, those traits like. For instance, the, the guy, the lady is supposed to be nurturing. 
Uh, okay, okay, okay. If I get you, you see, um, one thing is that uh, we have stereotype, stereotype rules that we have, you know, apportioned to males and females. It's like some people think that uh, only women uh, should cook, sweep, scrub, wash, dry, um, clean, and all that. So these are rules of women and the men they have other rules uh when they have to carry heavy objects around the house is a man's duty if they say the lights the bulb needs to be fixed the man must climb a table put a chair on the table if he is short to reach the bulb to fix the bulb if let's say the gas gets finished the man must go fill the gas, bring it back. Uh, if the, the car needs to be washed, is a man who must... They are, they are, these are stereotypes. But uh, we have gotten along well with that. Because, you know, women naturally love to cook. Not all women, but most women naturally love to cook because of their mat- motherly instincts. But they have to care for. It does not mean that a man cannot cook or should not cook. A man can cook. A man should be able to cook. It does not make you a woman. You are not playing a woman's role if you cook. You are not playing a man's role if you fix the box. You are not playing a man's role if you you fix the gas. The same way, you are not playing a woman's role if you sweep. If you have to sweep and you have to it has come that you have to sweep. You must sweep. Because remember that when you were in secondary school, you used to sweep. That's why secondary school, boys' school, you sweep, you scrub. They will not say this, a woman thing. You are the one who did the thing into the thing. So you must scrub <laughs> You must scrub it yourself. <laughs> I get it. So you scrub the urinal, you scrub everything. You sweep. You, you mop the floor as a guy. All those things are supposed to help us to know that these are just stereotypes. So people sometimes think that when you are a guy and let's say you are watching, like, oh, this is a, a woman's woman's job. It's, it's not a man's job. No, there's nothing like that. But um, traditionally, in our part of the world, we all know that women are the ones who usually cook. That, but the, the stereotype is to think that it is it is a taboo for a man to cook. There are some people who tell their male children, don't go to the kitchen. Whenever you go to the kitchen, they'll come and drive you away. Don't go there. There's a woman. Don't go there. But that's wrong. That's wrong. They should be able to go there. At least help their mother to do one or two things. When they go with it, they'll help their, their wives. I get you. So there's certain things that you can learn how to do to help you. If let's say that you come here and we are having come meetings, you can offer to go to the kitchen and help. As a guy, you can offer not not that you are just going to sit down there. You they'll be sending you. And all the difficult tasks they will give to you to do. To go and carry this, carry this bag of yeah by uh, maze, bring it, carry charcoal. Give us firewood. Give us this. Because you are a man there. And you, you, if you learn how to do that, it will help you. you. You you'll be able to help your wife when you marry. Certain things will not be, you know, difficult for you to do. Yeah, um, Daddy, with when the sun rises. Yeah, I think uh, as Elijah will ask the last question. Yeah. Who? Oh. Oh, Joyce, Doreen, Doreen. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Daddy, I want to ask a question. Um, it's something I have observed. I don't know how true that is, but I realized that whenever there is an issue, especially on the side of women, most times they talk on top of their voices. I don't know how true that is, but I have experienced that a lot of times. So I want to know what makes them do that. Yes. See, um. Because the man is not allowing them to talk. The man is trying to keep them, to mute them. You can't mute a woman. 
who has allowed the woman to talk. Because if you try to mute her, she cannot express herself. And they need to give expression to what they have in their hearts. The same way they give birth what they have in their wombs, they must always express what they have in their hearts. Otherwise, if it builds up, it's not good. So sometimes when the man is not giving them the chance to talk, then they try to raise their voice. And the, and the women are good at words. But it shouldn't get to that point. Actually, it shouldn't get to the point. You should not be raising your voice as a woman. Especially when you are talking to your husband. You should not be raising your voice. It's not a good thing to do. Okay? And my wife has never done that. Raise her voice. You know, like maybe we are talking and then she has raised her voice and somebody even next door will hear that you are having an argument. No, no, no. That one is not. But I'm not saying that if somebody does that, it's wrong. What I'm saying is that it's an, it's, a, it's an instinct, but you can control it. You can be... See, for instance, uh, the fact that some men beat their wives does not mean that it's normal. The same strength God gave us so that we can protect them, we can use that same strength to beat them. But it doesn't make it normal. It's rather abnormal. It's an abuse of power. Are you getting it? Yeah. get someone who's overly sensitive and someone who just wants you to pay yeah so like in case you get someone who's overly sensitive and another person who just wants you to pay or something but doesn't give you that much in case you get those type of people how can you handle them and how can you stay or survive in that situation somebody who is overly sensitive <laughs> fat you need prayer you need to pray Pray for the person and pray for yourself also. Because it's very difficult. You know, it's very because you never know when you are going to hurt the person. So sometimes what what you do is sometimes you just study the person. And then sometimes you have to play along. You know, play along with the person's uh, uh, tolerance, how far the person can tolerate things. And you have to be extremely careful. When you say this, it's going to be interpreted. When you say this, the person will, will go. Sound like you, the person is so sensitive that if you do this, the person will, you will quench the person. If you do this, you the person will go out. Uh, will get out of control. You have to always stay in the middle. Know what the person reacts to most frequently, and then try to minimize that. Okay. And also try to find out how best you can also devise strategies not to incur the person's displeasure. But also pray for the person be- and, 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 and help the person to be exposed to teachings. Because it's not the person's nature to be overly sensitive. It's because of upbringing, socialization, orientation, many things. As you are growing, you know, all that I remember when we were in secondary school, there was a guy who was given a nickname. The nickname was Shu. I mean, this guy, if you call him Shu, he can stone you. And sometimes, you know, you know, boys' school, when he comes to the dining hall and he's coming, you see, <laughs> and everybody is saying Shh, at the same time. We are all saying Shu, 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 Shu. And he got to realize that there's nothing he could do. Now he calls himself Shu. Now he's He's an, he's, a, he's an old person, you know. And so now he doesn't feel sensitive about it. You see that it was nothing. But the story behind the shoe is what was making him react like that. The one who came to the phone, why he came with the red shoe. You know, <laughs> you know, secondary like school, you know, they would tease you. <laughs> so that the shoe is too red. <laughs> so, so they started teasing him. And he became so sensitive concerning the red shoe, you know. But today, he sees that, after all, he, he has many shoes. That, you see, the reason why he was angry was because maybe that was his only shoe. You see? And when you, if, you, if you tease him with a shoe, it meant that you were trying to say that he doesn't have a good shoe. And he too can't change it. But as he grew, he forgot about it. Then somebody who is also attention, uh, who's seeking attention, is the same thing. The whole, the whole thing is gradual. Gradual. People change, but just that they don't change overnight. 
they just change uh, as time goes as time goes so gradually the person will be changing you know will be changing but if you, if you are not patient you want the person to change overnight and it, it can create problems okay last question okay um uh, it was a follow up question on uh, this uh, this question yeah, about uh, looking into people's eyes. Time to uh, about uh, this question. Like, okay, look into people's uh, eyes. Yeah, I mean, for instance, I like uh, looking on people's eyes when, like, I'm talking. But um, for example, when, when I met Bess for some time, like when I when I was talking to him, like he'd be looking somewhere. So I thought he, he don't want to like listen to what I'm trying to say. Mm. It was like it was after some time that I uh, had I thought that he had a problem like, looking at people's uh, face, like. I go to I go. Yeah. Uh, so like um, my question is like uh, when you are looking when somebody when you are talking to someone or when someone is talking to you and like I prefer looking to the person's face so that I can like get what the person is saying. Yeah, but sometimes like I say in Pakon like we show some we are going to be fully comfortable. That's not me who I'm also say like you feel Pakon do. It's like uh, it makes me lose attention to what like the person is saying or what I'm trying to say, and um, um, I'm having a classes now, like um, and they and they teach like, one-on-one classes, and like um, when, when when the lecturer is teaching, I want to look at the lecturer's face so that I can capture what he's saying. But for some time, when when I try to do that, like uh, as I know, I have some way be, and she, like I cannot <laughs> look, <laughs> I cannot look. Is she a lady him. or a man? Sorry. Is she a lady or a man? A, a, a man, a young man. Okay. A, yeah. a what? A young man. Young man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really. I don't know. Okay. So like, actually, like in that in that case, what should you do? Like when such things happen, because and I want I want attention. Like I want to I want to uh, have an attention for that person so that I can get what. The person is really saying or what I want to say, and the, and the other part is like um, when when you are busy, when especially when I'm busy and somebody wants to talk to you, like <laughs> especially when 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 you, you, are, you are busy with computer, <laughs> yeah, that, that's something like that. You are doing something on the computer, and like all your mind is on it, and you want to like solve a particular problem. Like people, somebody wants to ask you a question, and me for reason, I want to look at that person and like have that attention for that person so that I can get what the person is saying. But at that point in time, meet me yes at the end. And she, uh, I'll, I'll say, oh, okay, 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 okay. I'll just say, okay, okay. And, and, and uh, like, people, and I'm not focused like, what they, I see, what uh, the computer, when I say, when I say, what you be here, in Kasa. Like, my issue is like, when 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 I'm doing a particular thing, like just I don't want uh, divide attention. Maybe I'm more attention. I just one thing. So at at that instance, is like what should you do? Okay, um, I believe that you can uh, explain to the person. For instance, when usually somebody comes to talk to me, and maybe when you come. You come and sit down, and I'm doing something. For, I'll just tell you, uh, I have to send this message. After that, I will attend to you. So please let me send. Let me send this message. Uh, then the person knows that you are doing something, and then you attend to the person. But it is very rude and disheartening when somebody has come to speak to you, and you have your phone. That is, I want to talk to you. Uh huh. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So. Um, Okay, what, what were we saying? You know, it's, 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 it's not good. It means you are, you are not a, a listener. You put the thing down. If the thing is very important, if it's a call, oh, le- please, let me let me take this call. I'll, I'll be with you all. Let me send this message. Out. It's very important. Let me. Then you send a message. After that, you put the phone down. You listen to the person. When you look into somebody's face when the person is talking, you are trying to not only listen, you are trying to feel, put yourself in the person's shoe. But when you are not looking at the person's face, it's like you are just listening. And people sometimes tell that, ah, do we listen with our eyes or with our ears? 
You say it. I'm listening. He's not listening. Oh, no, no. For you, because you have trained yourself not to look at people's face. I can say that maybe you are listening, but you are looking somewhere. But the message is communicating to somebody is that you are not really listening. Because I can't see your face. See, so yeah, you, you have given me your ear that, okay, yeah, I'm listening. You know, when, when you, when, when Whenever, when, whenever you do this, you are imagining. When you do this, you are remembering. Yes, your eyes. When you look to your left like this, sometimes you are imagining. When you look to your right like this, you are remembering. It's natural. So, if you are not looking at the person's face and you are doing this, if you, as the person is talking, you are also remind. Sometimes you want the person to finish talking. Right? You tell, you say what you want to say. So let, let the person know. That, okay, please, I'm busy. For instance, with children, for instance, sometimes you, the, the, the child can come with something. You are busy. Sometimes you can tell the child to sit down here. I'll come and help you right now. Sit down here. Rather than the child standing there calling you, say. Hmm? 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 You talk, you talk. No, but you can let the child sit down here. You sit down here. And so the child knows that, okay, you attend to me, but you are doing something. So when you finish, you attend to me. That one is better. Okay. <laughs> It's true, it's true, it's true, yeah, it's true. <laughs> because, you know, uh, sometimes you are very busy doing something. You know, like a friend of mine, for instance, he used to tell us when we were second, he said that if you come to my house and you, you, you stay beyond 45 minutes, you are worrying me. Because I'm doing many things, I said, so you can't be brief. So, if it's not time for conversation, then I want to tell the person that, please, um, have to really beat this deadline. So can we schedule this time? But it shouldn't be that as for you always you don't have time to converse. If you are let's say in a relationship and it's like always you when the person calls you, you always say, Oh, you know, I'm I'm very busy, you know, I I'm very busy. So well, let, let's talk later. Okay. Then the next day, oh, See, I'm very busy. Then you let's talk later. You don't call. I mean, there's a problem. I get you. At least if the, you tell the person, uh, let me call you back. Try as much as possible. Call the person back, or else don't pick the call. Send a message. Okay, you send a message. Later on, call the person for the person to know that oh, you really uh, wanted to talk to him, but there was no time. I don't know whether it's clear. Okay. So, um, that's the end of today's session. Um, so, we are gradually get, getting into uh, more things. From next week, we are going to look at certain things about, um, uh, I don't know, but maybe how we can be emotionally strong to bond. We talk about maybe talk about that. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We pray that these teachings will be sealed in our soul, in our spirit. Help us to have the right frame of mind, the right mindset for marriage. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.